<laughs> wait on you. Look to you. We just thank you that you gave us your son Jesus. And Jesus, you gave yourself that we might have life and have it in abundance. And we thank you. We thank you for every good thing we have in our lives, for all the wonderful gifts you've poured into our lives. And we just want to offer uh, some of those things back to you. And so we just pray you use these offerings that we bring to you, use them yeah, for your glory, and that the world might see and know you better. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. So it takes easy. It's time for the. Uh, Young folks to go. And uh, if the others want to turn in their Bibles to John chapter 11, we're going to look at the story, well, known story, <laughs> as that of Lazarus, but there are some incredibly powerful truths um, in this. And so, you know, it's basically the gospel message that we can all have eternal life. Through Jesus, and that's that's the most the most wonderful news. So it's the uh, sense of night coming to the end, nearly now of my series. I've been looking at the glory of God, as particularly as shown through Jesus, and uh, so all the wonders, the beauty, the majesty, everything we think of, the awesomeness of, of God. Actually, we see it in the awesomeness of Jesus. Uh, and what he did. And it's through him that we can know the Father in a real and personal way. And that was his intention um, in doing that. So on this one now, we're up to say Jesus, uh, the resurrection and the life, that we can all have eternal life. So I'm just going to read, and I say I'm going to read, I don't want to apologise for reading a big chunk, but I simply thought I'd rather read, as it were, the whole thing, and... Uh, and then, and then talk about it. So I'm going to read chapter 11 from the beginning um, right up to ooh, um, verse 43, 44. So, now a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sister sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. When he heard this, Jesus said, this sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory, so that God's Son may be glorified through it. Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Yet when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days. Slightly unusual thing. Is that love? Then he said to his disciples, Let us go back to Judea. But Rabbi, they said, a short while ago the Jews tried to stone you because things this was Jesus heading towards Jerusalem and the cross, and, uh, and opposition was rising, and, and all sorts of bad things were happening. So the disciples were a bit worried anyway. Um, Rabbi, they said, a short while ago the Jews tried to stone you, and yet you're going back there. Jesus answered, are there not twelve hours of daylight? A man who walks by day will not stumble, for he sees by his world's light, this world's light. It is when he walks by night that he stumbles, for he has no light. After he said this, he went on to tell them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I'm going there to wake him up. His disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get better. Jesus had been speaking of his death, but his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. So then he told them quite plainly, Lazarus is dead, and for your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Then Thomas, also called Didymus, said to the rest of the disciples, let us go also. We may die with him. So that's, I always think that's a nice one that Thomas is often thought as the doubter of the world. He's actually, yeah, yeah, let's go there. Let's do it. It's always good. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Because of the two days and the extra 
times with messengers and things. Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, dashed out, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. <laughs> And whoever lives and believes in me, this is a fantastic message, whoever lives, that's you and I, and believes, will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she told him, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who has come into the world. After she'd said this, she went back and called her sister Mary aside. The teacher is here, she said, and he's asking for you. So when Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet entered the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews had been with Mary in the house, comforting her, noticed how quickly she got up and went out. They followed her, supposing she was going to the tomb to mourn. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was, or Mary had the crowd now, and, and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, saying as Martha, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? he asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, See how he loved him. And some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? So that's three times he's been questioned. Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Mount Martha, sister of the dead man, by this time there's a bad smell, for he has been there four days. Then Jesus said, out loud, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked up and prayed again aloud, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I said this for the benefit of the people standing here that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Yeah, I would just thank you, Father, for your word. It is a lamp to our feet, it's food for our souls. We thank you that your spirit enables us to understand, to see <coughs> your glory, to see you at work in all that you do. And so we just pray, just uh, open our hearts and eyes and minds and to see you more this morning as we look at this um, incredible story. Amen. So, um, yes, yeah, absolutely incredible story. And on the next slide, in a sense, a key verse right at the heart of that is the um, Jesus saying, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, he who believes in me will live, even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. And there's a challenge there. Do you believe this? <laughs> so, just going to look at the uh, an introduction to, because I just... John's Gospel is, is just so wonderful to, to read. Um, just as a sort of introduction, I just thought quickly, um, John's, it, it's written, it actually says of itself in John 20, verse 31, these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing 
you may have life in his name. So the whole gospel is there. John is trying to get across, you know, what he's seen and what he's got to know and to understand that Jesus is the, the Son of God, is very God, come to us, and so that by having faith in him, we can actually know the Father. And there's the interesting little part at, at the beginning of, of that, that chapter, um, verses four, five, six, around there, uh, the reason why Jesus delayed going, because you could think, goodness me, one of your best friends is sick, and you can do something about it. Surely you go dashing off, it's a natural thing. And obviously later on he gets questioned, because he doesn't do that. But, um, but if you look at verses 4, 5, and 6, those, those verses, it's quite clear, Jesus delayed. He loved, he loved them, he loved them as a family. He loved all of them, Mary, Martha, but he had a greater goal, and the greater goal was this of showing his glory to them. He, he says to the disciples, he says to Mary, to Martha, he says to the, all the crowd, this is about God's glory. And actually, even if there's a bit of suffering, and this is a, a, a message for us all, even if there's a bit of suffering, actually God can have a greater goal in that somehow it's going to reveal something more of him. And, and Jesus, you know, it shows. Um, there's a famous verse, John 3, 16, For God so loved the world, that whosoever believes in him shall have eternal life, shall so not perish, but have eternal life. Um, and John 17, verse 1 says, Now this is eternal life, that they may know the one true God and Jesus Christ, whom he has sent. So there is there is something about God revealing his glory through Jesus, and then us seeing it, the glory of God the Father and Jesus, and coming to faith and, and, and believing in him. So there's an, an important pattern there. Sorry, I said you go on to the next, I should have said go on to the next. Sorry, I'm just done. I'm picking. I'm picking these things that um, in this introduction, and particularly at the bottom, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to um, say that there's this, this pattern that we need to get into that Jesus reveals, and, and the whole of creation is, is God revealing his glory, and then particularly through Jesus and the cross, we get the ultimate revelation of his love and his glory and his character and his purposes. We get them all the time. God is revealing stuff to us in all sorts of different ways, through his word, through his spirit, through the world, through all sorts of stuff. We see it, we behold it, and we receive something from him. We receive this grace and this power to lead a godly life. And uh, so we know God's love through, John's, uh, through, through Jesus. That's John's big message in the gospel. And you don't measure... God's love for you by how healthy and wealthy and comfortable you are. I don't think the Apostle Paul would have thought he was loved much, would he? If that was the case, because he went through a lot of discomfort and torture and prison. And also, you don't measure God's love for you by, by your wealth and health. You measure it by how much of himself you are receiving. You are getting to know you are getting to enjoy. So that's, that's the real measure. If you can know in your heart that you are just so enjoying him, so loving him, so aware of his presence, so aware of his goodness in your life, then, in fact, I'll read um, John 14. John 14, verses 20 to 21. So I'm going to read a few scriptures from uh, from John's Gospel because it's just it is so uplifting, and uh, and this is when uh, Jesus is promising his disciples there they're in a bit of stress and he's promising them that the Holy Spirit and that he will come to live uh, with with them. Look at these verses, John 14, verse 20 to 22. On that day, when when the Spirit comes you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. 
whoever has my whoever who has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love him and show myself to him. So Jesus is all the time working to reveal um, his love and the Father's love to us, to the world. And that's where we, we, we are the vessels, we are the ambassadors who bring this message. There is hope in any situation. God the Father is working things. And even though there's terrible things happening around, and there's natural death and like Lazarus and other things, actually beyond that, there's a bigger picture of God the Father revealing his glory and reaching out to open your eyes and to open the world's eyes to know him better. So that's the that's the sort of introduction. So on the next one, so uh, the th I'm not going to be a long one. Um, the, my, my structure for looking at it, I, I I'm just going to do this. There's three encounters um, in, that, in that story and <laughs> three questions. Um, and, and in a sense, questioning his love for Lazarus, his love for people. Um, there's the encounter with Martha, the encounter with Mary, and the encounter with the, the others, the crowd, the hangers on, and the mourners. And in that, there's three things that I'm, I'm, I'm picking out. And there's this power and that Jesus reveals, he speaks powerful truths, things that words that bring eternal life. So there's, 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 there's powerful truths that can affect things. There's also powerful emotions that are going on. There's lots of people sobbing, uh, weeping, wailing. There's different sorts, actually. There's a couple of different words there for, for, for crying. Um, there's, there's the sobbing sorts and there's wailing. Um, and, then, and then, but there's not just thoughts and truths and emotions actions and the result is powerful actions and, and in a sense I'd want that to be a pattern um, for our lives as well so okay let's we'll skip on to that so, so the first of these then is his encounter with with, Mom, with Martha um, oh and I just so I, I mentioned at that point as well there's, there's a funny some people might think it was a funny few verses in, um, in verses 7 to 10 where, where when um, when the disciples question oh, well it'd be dangerous if, if we go back and um, well we get beaten and, and all sorts of stuff and Jesus tells this funny story about day and night and, and 12 hours in a day and 12 hours in a night and and in a sense, I think what that is, is talking about is Jesus knows he's exactly in the will of the Father. He's exactly walking in the light. He's doing exactly what he wants the Father to be with. And he knows, he's assured, that nothing will upset or get in the way of what God has planned for him to be doing. So he can say to the, um, the disciples, no, it's absolutely fine. We'll go back now to this place at this time because God has got something for me to do and I'm going to do it to reveal his glory. And nothing else is going to get in the way. In just the same way as he knows he's going to the cross a little bit later on. And it's in God's appointed time, in God's way, and as long as you walk in the light, as it were, you're doing what the Father says, then at the appointed time, um, in God's sovereign way, these things will happen. And we can know that for our lives as well. I just sense when I was thinking about that. That as long as we try to walk in the lines and we try to do what we think God wants us to do at the right time, then we will be okay in the sense that we will be in his will and, and, and things will work out and we shouldn't be um, fretting. There's a, a lovely verse there again. I, I said I'm going to read some scriptures. John 9. Verse 4 to 5, just about that. Yeah. And, uh, and Jesus just healed the, the blind man. And then Jesus says, As long as it is day, we must do the work of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. Well, 
I am in the world, I am the light of the world. So you just get this sense that Jesus is the light of the world. We look to him and walk in his light. Don't do anything so get in the dark, then things will, God will work things out. But she, she questions, verses 21 to 24, she questions him, even though she's trusting him, it's obviously from the words. She says, if you'd have been here, then, you know, you didn't have to die. And, and yet she knows, because she's saying, well, yeah, but I know you can still do anything. Um, you can raise him, in a sense, you can raise him if you want to. And, and Jesus says he, 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 he would do that. And she automatically thinks about the end time when she, they believed, you know, all, they all believed that at the end they could be raised and with God, but Jesus was actually um, speaking about immediately and raising him. So he, he reveals this, this great truth, the profound truth that we, that, we just, that we read about. He is the resurrection and the light. He is the Messiah. He is the Saviour. He is the one. And, um, and everyone needs that. Apart from him, everyone will die physically, but you can die knowing that you have eternal, you physically die, knowing that nothing, you know, that, that verse, that chapter 5 that I read about whoever lives will never die, but will always be with him. So everyone needs a saviour. Lazarus, though he's physically dead, Jesus can give him life. Martha, though physically living, she knows, she is assured that she also can have that eternal life. Lazarus will die again sometime at the end of his physical life, but he will be with Jesus forever. Martha and Mary can be assured by their faith that there'll never be a moment, there'll never be a millisecond of their whole life when they won't, Jesus won't be with. There'll never be a place that you go, he won't be with them. So there's a fantastic, um, there's a fantastic revelation, if you like. Jesus is saying, I'm revealing my power and my glory to you now. You people, my own Martha, but also these others, they can see it now, my glory and my power, reassuring you who I am and what I can do and what I promise you, and it's up to you. I mean, lots of people didn't accept it. But, uh, but he's saying, I'm revealing my power and my glory because I love you. So the second, um, second uh, encounter, this time's with Mary, and, and we begin to see not just the truth that he's declaring, but the, the emotions behind it. And um, I think, I, I find this little bit, it, it, there's lots of different people if you read around have slightly different takes on this, on, on, on all of this. Um, but it, it's clear, you know, that uh, I'm right now, it's clear that Jesus is fully God and fully man. He has the power to bring life, um, but he's also fully man. He's expressing emotions. He's expressing love and, uh, and, and other things. There's an interesting thing that he keeps saying a few times, you, might, you can easily skip over it, and you think, oh, well, Jesus wept. It's just... He, he lost a friend, and he's, he's in empathy and other things. He's just um, a bit emotional about it. But actually, the scripture is quite clearly saying, Jesus was troubled in his spirit. It says, um, you know, there, there's something, it says, he was, he was disturbed. There's, there's, there's something else beyond that. There is that. And Jesus is clearly empathetic people who have lost their brother or, or he's empathetic of uh, his people he knows while dying things like that but there's also something else that's going on and be, be, because again it says there's other places in scripture where it says Jesus was troubled um, and uh, and it's not just um, that, that simple um, straightforward emotion So I think what, what's going on as well is there's something of the, you know, people are questioning him. 
and his motives, and particularly the, the crowds all the time. You know, he's in the past. He's done miracles. He's, he's done things. He's showed them something. And all they've done is throw it back at him and been sceptical and been suspicious. And there's still, even, we're going to come on to that bit where when, when the, 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 the crowd can't speak to him, and, and they said, sort of, oh, well, he could, he could, supposedly he could heal a blind man, but he didn't, doesn't bother to say. And, and when he looked over Jerusalem in the scriptures, and he wept, and, and it's clearly, he weeps at people's you know, unbelief, at their not receiving what he's offering. He weeps that they just keep on going their own way, even though I'm telling them and demonstrating to them. There is something else to do. So I think there's there's clearly um, something else um, that's, that's going on, and the, and the different Greek words. I'm not going to go into it. I'm not a Greek scholar anyway. But if you if you look at those those things, there's a different different words for weeping, different sorts of weeping, and there's different words for this being troubled, and uh, and clearly. But it's all showing that he's very much God and man. He's got the full range of emotions. But obviously in Jesus, they're all perfect. Um, and he can express them um, perfectly when he got angry with the, the money lenders, And he turned over the tables and, and did stuff. He's, he's got the emotions. He's not a robot. He's got anger. He's got empathy. He's got uh, love. He's got all these things. And he expresses them. And he expresses them perfectly. So these emotions, in fact, are a revelation of his glory as well, his love, and of course they, they are perfect in him. His emotions were deep and strong, but perfectly expressed. He hated unbelief, hated suspicion, he hated falsehood, and the things that kept, keep, that kept people from knowing him, he hated that. And that's why uh, we hate sin, because he keeps people from God, it destroys their life. So you can, in a righteous way, you can have all of these these emotions, and you can express them. Right, the third one, the last one, an encounter with the mourners, um, the other the other people who again who are quite cynical. I I, I take their words as, uh, as as quite cynical. Um, you know where 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 it, it set. Um, Well, when Jesus wept, <laughs> I, I don't know how I said, see how he loved him. <laughs> it, it could be, oh, see how he loved him. I get the impression, mm, yeah, he see, he see how he loved him. He, he couldn't bother to come, but, um, um, so, I, you know, there was, there was a lot of uh, suspicion and, and doubt around. Uh, but we now get to the point where Jesus takes action. So as I say, it's not just knowing the truth, it's not just having a heart and, and the emotions for it, it's actually doing something about it. And so, you know, we're often told, you know, you want more, you don't just want thoughts, you don't just want, uh, but you want deeds, you want some action, you want to see your love in, in action. And so, he again, he displays, um, he displays, by stepping up in action. And we need, in our ministry, in our ministry as a church, in our ministry as, as people, we need all three of those those things. You know, we need the truth embedded you know, in all that we do. We need to have a heart and, and emotions and, and things that um, motivate us and, and all the rest of it. But then we also need to be people of action. It's no good just looking and knowing something and perhaps feeling something but staying away. You know, I think I, I think I just sense this when I was preparing that you know, that, that's an encouragement to us in, in our ministry, in that sense, to actually get in and speak into situations. You know, if there's something horrible, demon going on, deal with it and, and help the person get free from it. Um, it's not just thinking about it and thinking, oh, it'd be nice if that person um, actually know the truth. No, hopefully you discern what's happening and then with the love of God get into action we can get, change the situation 
So he then he prays out loud, that's deliberately, he's, he's praying you know, so that people can hear that he's in touch with the Father and the Father are, are, are wanting in, in doing these things. And again, it's linked with verse 4 and verse 40. You know, when he's telling his disciples and, and that it's for God's glory that the, the delay and the timing is the way that it is. Again, he says in verse 40, this is also that these people can see your glory, Father. Um, so, it, so it is important. And it's out loud. <laughs> you know, there's no hiding. It's Lazarus, come out. And, uh, and we need to speak loud in situations. And in a sense, Lazarus is a preview of all our resurrections. You know, <laughs> it's Lazarus. It's a bit like, you know, 35 years ago, whenever it was, I haven't counted. You know, God said to me, <laughs> Derek, you know, come out. And I was born again. Suddenly in my life, the old way of doing was, was no longer sat on. I got a new life. And this new life wasn't where I'm going to die, as I will do in a few years physically. But my new life is with Jesus forever. So it's a, it's a preview of all our resurrections. His love doesn't spare us suffering or death. In a sense, Mary and Martha and the friends had to go through that, that, that bit of suffering, that bit of grief. But he gives you the gift of his presence, his glory, and his power. That they're all now available to you and working in you. God the Father, creator of the whole universe, living in you through Jesus' spirit, living in you. You have his presence in you, with you, for you, no matter where you go, no matter what you do. And something of his majesty and his beauty and his power is at work in you and is available and it's encouraged to be given away and to bring this hope to other people. So those three things, in a sense, do we welcome him, do we see him, and do we receive him? That's, that's the choice. Mary and Martha did, and will be with him now forever, and some of the other mourners didn't. So getting on to the, the three, I say the three things which I've been highlighting, but now in a sense I've just put them into three little things to think about, the, the what, so what, the application. And do you have eternal life through faith in Jesus? Because it's offered. There isn't anyone here or anyone that you know that that isn't offered to. So I think just about anybody here has that. But, um, and your friends and family, people that you know who may not, but you, have, you, can, you can invite them too. You can, you, can, you can offer that to them. Then the, the truth, the emotions and the action. Is, are you feeding on the powerful truths in the Bible? It's an encouragement, as I'm, I'm always regularly doing, to say, read the Bible. You know, every day, different times when you can fit, when you can fit it in. But, you know, these are the truths where you meet with the maker and creator of the universe. You meet with and fellowship with and friendship with. I love John's Gospel and John's letters. I think I'm going to do, actually, just as I'm going to do John's letter um, next, after I finish this. Because you just get this so that, you know, in John 1, you know, Jesus, John says, you know, We have seen his glory. We've been with him. We, we know what it's, it's like. You can feed on these things. Are you expressing, secondly, are you expressing? those emotions um, in a godly way <laughs> we know that from the world the, the world is an emotional place there's lots of people getting angry and, and screaming and shouting and, and throwing the, the teacups about um, but are we expressing our emotions in a godly way and you can have those emotions not just love and, um, and um, you, know, you, can, you can express them anger, you can express them in a, in a godly way, in a righteous way, like Jesus did. And so we, but mostly we want to share this love um, with other people. And then the third thing is, the last thing is, let's be people of action. It's 
not, not just have the, uh, the thoughts and the emotions, but let's put things into practice. You know, the presence and power of God in everyday situations. And uh, I, I think I had this one up last time. I left it there because I thought, I like this. Bible reading plus Holy Spirit equals intimacy with Jesus and the Father. <coughs> so let's enjoy the, the Word and the Spirit. So let's, let's close in prayer. And then, um, yeah. yeah, we just thank you, thank you, Father, that you so loved us and that you sent Jesus and to save us. Thank you that you are always showing me your, your love. Thank you that you are so patient and forbearing, you know, not just with your people for millennia who just keep ignoring you and going their own way. You still in your mercy reach out and try to restore them. So, Lord, just keep restoring us, keep restoring our families, our households, the church, this community. Just continue to, to pour your love into each one of us. And Lord, let, let hope rise, and not just in our lives, but in the lives of those around us and in the lives of the nations. So we just want to submit to you and, and pray that even now as we um, we're quiet in your presence and even now when we um, sing songs of worship that, that we will um, you know, deal with things that are um, holding us back, things that are keeping us from knowing, knowing you better and keeping us from enjoying you better. Amen. Yeah, that